Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and I'm bringing you some gameplay in my Comet, which is the Tier 7 British medium tank. As many of you guys will know, this is my favourite tank in the game. I love it. Why? Because it's got really high DPM. It's got pretty okay camera rating, at least compared to the Tier 8 British medium tank. It's got fantastic gun depression, and it's an all-rounder. That's why I like the Comet. You guys will know I've got quite a few replays up on my channel with the Comet. This one specifically I thought would be really interesting for you. As we can see there's one tier 9 tank on the enemy team which means that this matchup is as high end for the Comet as it can get. The Comet as a tier 7 tank can never meet tier 10 tanks. I hasten to add this game is from 8.5. I think it was one of the last days of 8.5. It might have actually been the last day of 8.5 because as you can see, the GW Panthers is still tier 6. And there are four enemy on the enemy team. Four artilleries, I should say, on the enemy team. So here we can see me trying to shoot the IS-3 in the side. Must have taken some track absorb. And I get hit once by the Black Prince. Now one thing about the Comet is that with its regular ammo, it has 148 millimeters of penetration and 140 damage. I must add that I'm using pudding and tea in this tank because it is my pimp tank. The Comet is my pimp tank and it's one that I only use premium consumables on. I do carry quite a stock of premium ammunition on this tank as well. You see there are 18 shells. But I still feel that I mostly use regular ammunition on this tank. And unless you're engaging tier 8s and tier 9s frontally, then the regular ammunition is all you need. So right now we can see their most deadly tank, the E75, is using his armor frontally. We can't quite manage to get his side armor there. I decided that I wanted to shoot out the pillar and then figured out, oh, okay, you can shoot through the pillar. And wow, okay, Black Prince is going man mode behind me. Up, oh, he was out. That was pretty foolish play by that Black Prince. Really should not have poked over that ridge line. Well, looks like we hit his mantlet. We finally put one shot into the Yag Panther 2. And I noticed there's a 110 behind me, and oh god, the FCM 50T's got me. Oh, there's an E75. I have to repair. The artillery's getting me. Everyone's getting me. Oh god, it's all going wrong. Let's get out of here. And there's an ISU 152 looking at me as well, so I reverse directly backwards, hopefully avoiding fire from the ISU 152. And there's an E75 that I have no idea why I fired that shot. That was really bad play. I have to admit, right now, I'm pretty panicky. And that's never the right thing to do. Watching me play this back, I realized that I'm doing the right thing by trying to get out of this situation because I feel that I'm more valuable alive than dead. Trying to engage those tanks in that position is really ineffective. I panicked there with that shot on that E75. For all I know, I could have re-stealthed, and I gave up my position with that shot. And oh god, the 75s got my back. Hopefully he ignores the Comet, the tiny little tier 7 tank. As we can see in this matchup, it was only me. I was the only tier 7 tank. There was a tier 7 light with me, but yeah, not the best of matchups really. To be only against tier 8 and tier 9 tanks, and relatively high artic high tier artillery as well. So I haven't really done much so far. My team has been melting. And so is the enemy team. We're just over four minutes into the game and there's barely anything left. So I decided to go through the town to try and sneak in. Enemy is hit. As the enemy do have three remaining we artillery. Shazam, three snipes there on the GW Panther takes him out the game. So the game's looking pretty hot right now. It's pretty close. We just lost our Tiger 2 to that Yag Panther 2. Right now I'm thinking there's still valuable artillery to take out. So I adjust my position. I know this could be very dangerous but I want to try and make it across to go after the artillery. So I take my chances with the 110. I fire at him on the move but trying to penetrate a 110 frontally, really with that kind of shot, it's not going to happen at all. 
What you see me doing here is loading my premium rounds now. Because I thought I was going to have an engagement on the E75. I look to my right just in case the artillery were waiting around that corner. There are still two enemy artillery left. And there he is. And the shell wafts. What a shame. So the enemy E75 has got four tanks on him now. I thought, ah, they'll be okay with that E75. But oh my god, he's full health. I just noticed that. I aim at his turret sideways. That one didn't go through. But unfortunately, the 200 millimeters of penetration with our premium shells is not enough to go through his turret at that angle. And wow, an AFK Type 59 appears. Now, what's annoying about this Type 59 is that he is spotting me right now. He's spotting me for the enemy artillery. I spot the uh, the S51 there with a proxy spot, and my KB5 makes the kill on him. Nice shot. So I load regular ammunition, like and I shoot the right back through. of the Type 59. One thing you'll notice is you might be saying, why aren't you shooting him in his engine right now? The reason why I'm not shooting him in his engine, because the back of the Comet does not have any gun depression. That's a very unique feature about the Comet, is that it can't aim downwards over the back of its tank, so I had to shoot him in the turret. So right now I'm auto-aiming at him so that I can spot the artillery, and we spot the artillery. We miss our first shell. We don't miss the second one, and we go back to taking out that Type 59 who's keeping us spotted. With the Type 59 cleaned out, it's now time to make a move for the E75. I load premium rounds, because that's what I'm going to need to be able to penetrate this guy. Even from the side, if I shoot the side of his turret with my regular ammunition, it's not enough. So right now I'm thinking, okay, the Yak Panther 2 is capping, and I've got to deal with the Z75. That's my plan right now. I've managed to get the jump on him. Put one into the side of his tank. I'm trying to outrun his turret traverse. Fortunately, the second one bounces, and the traverse speed on the comet's not quite good enough, so I tried to juke him, but he makes his shot happen. I was hoping that the KB-5 might have been able to penetrate him a little bit more than he did, so it resulted in me having to shoot that E-75 four times, doing over 600 damage to him. So now we've seen that the Yank Panther 2 has stopped capping. So I know that the Yank Panther 2 is coming out down one of the alleyways. Okay, so we just saw our KB-5 die. Oh, that's not a good situation. Now I'm calling this the battle for the top gun. Why? Because the E-75 has already got 6 kills. The Yank Panther 2 is on 5 kills. And I'm on 5 kills, which is remarkable considering I'm the only tier 7 tank on our team that is not a light tank. So this is basically as bad matchup as you can get for the Comet. I did get very lucky being able to do 100% of the damage to that Type 59 who was AFK. But now it's my time to shine and oh god the Yag Panther's nearly on full health. I remember earlier I shot him once and I have to deal with the Yag Panther who has until that point over a thousand health. And I don't have a repair pack and I've only got 42 health. And he's got five kills, which suggests that either he's had a lucky game or he's fairly competent. So it's time to outplay him. I go forwards using the bushes, just sneaking, just sneaking, just sneaking. Remember that when you get within five meters of the bush, you can see through it, but the enemy can't see you. I decide that I can make an engagement, so I fire one. I fire two, and then I use the pillars to mask my approach backwards, and he misses his shot. I fire another one into him. And really, that just shows you the um, DPM of the Comet. We've already done 683 damage to that Yank Panther 2, and he only had a chance to fire at us once. I will admit the caveat that I am using premium ammunition here, which does give me 200 millimeters of penetration. But when I'm trying to engage a tank in a one-on-one -on -one fight that is a tier higher than me, and I start without a repair pack and no health, I feel that it's justified right now. Managed to put another shot into the Yag Panther 2 there. He knows where I am, and he's coming for me. So what I'm doing now is I'm thinking, 
will he come left or right? He comes from my right. I put, I try and put a cheeky shot into him and, oh, this is where I nearly make a mistake. Oh God. I forgot that there was a gap in the building there, but he fired, which allows me to get one more shot into him. I don't know what gun he's using, so I pull back. I could have probably shot him twice there, considering how good my rate of fire is. But I have to admit, this is the first time that my heart's been going in a, a few hundred games, probably since the last time I had uh, the opportunity to get a Colobanos medal in the Comet. So <laughs> I'm just trying to show you guys what I'm thinking right now. So I'm thinking I need to be forward so I can proxy spot him, i.e. I need to be within the, um, the proxy spot view range of him because I need to escape. Okay, so now he's let me out. That was a really bad move by him. Where he was, he had me completely camped in. But I guess he decided that I would just stay there the whole time. So I move out and I've escaped. I put one clutch shot into him. And now it's turned into another cat and mouse game. So now I've evened up the score a little bit. He only has 48 health left. And I've got 42 health left. Having done over 1,100 damage to this Yag Panther 2 now. So I'm quite happy to let him re-stealth now. I feel like I'm outplaying him. So I stayed there and as soon as I could not no longer see him, I decide to relocate. I decide like I have to outplay this guy. So I'm deciding that I can make my move and flank around him because I think he'll be camping there looking for me. So I come out around the corner, I poke to try and see if my sixth sense will go off, but it doesn't. And then here I go, I make my move, and I make my first mistake, the Yag Panther was there waiting for me, and oh my god, I just got a pudding bounce! Oh my god! Pudding bounce. Pudding bounce. An action replay of that bounce. I want to see where it bounced, because when I was playing this game live, I did not see where it bounced, so here we go. Okay. The Yag Panther has spotted me. Let's slow it down a lot now. It's about to shoot me. It hits the turret by the looks of it. So that shows you how, yep, definitely hits the turret. Hit my turret mantlet. You can see the sparks coming off the tank there. And that is all she, all she wrote for uh, Mr. Yag Panther 2. One on one duel with a tank that's a higher tier than you. Who has already got five kills, and you want to take the top gun and not him. Sometimes you just gotta do that and never give up. So let's take a look at some post game stats. So here are the post game stats in the comet. We got ourselves 2,491 experience, and we can see because of the premium shells that we fired in that game, we actually lost money. <laughs> We lost money, even though we made 53,000 credits, 802. We <laughs> we lost 73 credits with our premium account, even though we made 2,000, nearly 2,500 experience. Really, the game was unremarkable until the end, but I really showcased outplaying your opponents. We can see that we took down the top gun, we took the top gun away from the E75, and we took the top gun away from the Yag Panther 2, doing 100% of the damage to that Yag Panther 2, including the time I shot him at the beginning of the game. That bounce that we got off our turret at the end gave us a Spartan medal as well, which is hilarious. So the 3,800 damage is fairly unremarkable, considering that 1,300 of that was to an AFK Type 59. But still, getting 1,661 experience without premium in a game where you're the only Tier 7 tank, apart from having a Tier 7 light tank with you, is a pretty good effort. I hope that I keep showing you these kind of replays, the ones, what I'm thinking of at the end and how you can outplay people in a one-on-one -on -one situation. If you want to see how this game played out live, then I'm posting a video response so you can see my reactions as it happens. As always guys, I hope you've enjoyed this, thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll see you soon.